As I often say, if you have a question, please ask. I had a student ask me about this. This is from the week that we did participial constructions. Uh, and in this example, there is a typo, right? This me should be he, that he might be late. Uh, so in case you were confused, what week is this? Uh, week four. Uh, and this is um, at uh, the near the 25 minute mark, right? So this is a typo. Now, last week we talked about quotation marks, uh, and there's one more thing I want to add. We talked about special meanings, right? Scare quotes to say that this is a word that somebody else is using. Um, there are two, there's one other use of quotations that you should know. When we're talking about the title of a work, if the work is itself complete, if it's a book or like a CD or a painting, in English we put it in italics, 写体. And if the name of the work itself has a word that is in italics, uh, then just like with quotation marks, we alternate between italics and no italics. So, for example, Taylor Swift's 2022 album Midnight's is a complete CD, so the title of this CD is in italics. But if you have a book called something like A Study of Taylor Swift's Midnight's, then most of this title will be in italics, but the name of the CD will go back to what's known as Roman type, zi the italicized, because it is italics within italics. But if the title of the work uh, refers to a part of a complete work, if it itself is not complete, so if it is, for example, an article in a magazine, the title of the magazine is a complete work, so the magazine title will be in italics, but the title of the article will use quotation marks. Or in this example, Lavender Haze is one song on the album Midnights. It is one song out of 13, so itself it is not a complete work, so the title of the song will be put in quotation marks. Uh, and then there's one last thing to say. Uh, not here, where is it? Here is it, yeah, there we go. Um, oh, I didn't write it. Okay, the one more thing to say is that in Chinese, when we want to emphasize something, we will put the emphasis inside quotation marks. But in English, if you want to emphasize something, we use italics, right? It is very good, and the word very is italicized. So to emphasize something in English, we do not use quotation marks. Quotation marks are only used when you are literally using someone else's exact words, or you are talking about a part of a complete work. If you need to uh, emphasize, please use italics. OK, uh, let's take a look at the homework. Page 25. I'll give you some time to compare your answers.
uh, I'll give you one minute here and then we'll move to the next part. So you're going to be looking at quotation marks and commas and periods and capital letters. OK. Do you need more time? OK, moving on. OK, moving on page 26. I want to draw your attention to this exclamation point. Mr. Garcia says this sentence to himself. Uh, this sentence should be now I've heard every excuse in the world. He's uh, exclaiming, gan tan jing hu. So there should be an exclamation point here. OK, next page. OK, next page. Number two. Sorry, not next page. This is still page 26. It's the second question. Uh, again, this should be an exclamation point because it says enthusiastically, so it is an exclamation. Jinghu. Right. Do you have questions? Forgot to ask you. Do you have questions about these answers? Yeah, you don't have to wait for me to say, do you have questions? When you're comparing answers and you have a question, just raise your hand and we can talk about it. OK, next page, page 27.
OK, moving on. The second one. So again, that's great is an exclamation. There should be an exclamation mark. Or exclamation point. OK, and then page 28. So I just said that for a complete work, we use italics. But when you're writing something by hand, it's hard to tell the difference. So when you're writing by hand for a complete work, we underline. But the meaning is the same. This is a complete work. OK, those are all the homework answers from last week. Do you have questions? OK, uh, if you got here late or something, the file is on Moodle. So you can go home and download the file and compare answers yourself. This week. We're going to be talking about. Indirect questions and noun clauses. In some cases, these two things look very similar, so I decided to put them together. Uh, indirect questions, indirect quotations also. They all look quite similar. So last week, we talked about in, uh, we talked about direct quotations, right? Uh, something like this. An indirect quotation is taking out the quotation marks. But if you take out the quotation marks, the grammar has to match the overall sentence. Said is in the past tense, loves is in the present tense. So when you take out the quotation marks, first you have to add a word that tells the reader this is a noun phrase. Then the indirect quotation grammar has to match uh, throughout the entire sentence. So said is past tense. Therefore, the word love has to be in past tense. The word that tells the reader. That starting from here. To here, this is a noun clause. A noun clause is a complete sentence that functions as a noun. So this entire sentence, he subject, loved verb, grammar object, this complete sentence is one noun. It is the object of the overall sentence. He is the subject. Said is the verb. That tells you that we're going to use a noun clause. And this noun clause is the object. So a noun clause is a complete sentence that is used as a noun. Uh, when it looks like this, 
it is an indirect quotation. You are giving the meaning of what the person said, but you're not using the exact language that the person used. In this example, the person used the present tense, but you are using the past tense, so it's not exactly the same. You cannot add quotation marks. Now, indirect quotations are merely a one of the common uses of the noun clause. You can also use or you have to use noun clauses after words like. Said. Uh, think. Mean. Uh, implied. These kinds of words, any kind of word where. The object is a complete sentence. Well, I guess they should all be in the correct tense, right? So I say that he. So again, in this noun clause, starting with that, he is the subject. Doesn't like is the verb. Grammar is the object, so this is a complete sentence really is an adverb. Adverbs do not change the grammar of a sentence. They change the meaning of a sentence, but they don't change the grammar of a sentence. So this is a complete sentence, and because it comes after the word that, we know that it is used as a noun clause as one noun. It is the object of this bigger sentence. I guess this should also be present tense. So I is the subject. For the verb, you can choose one of these words, and the object is this sentence. Now, we've been talking about verbs where somebody gives you some meaning, but it doesn't have to be this kind of verb. For example, Again, you is the subject, love is the verb, grammar is the object, so this is a complete sentence. Comes after the word that, so you know that we are using this complete sentence as a noun clause. This is the object of this sentence. I is the subject, like is the verb, that you love grammar is the object. Now, sometimes, the sentence can feel a little bit weird. So people will often add the fact. The fact that just means that. The grammar is exactly the same. It doesn't have to be a real fact. This is an empty filler word because some people feel like just using the word that feels kind of weird. So you can say that it is yi. Now, if you can use a complete sentence as a noun, it can be the object. It can also be the subject. That beginning a noun clause, subject you, love, verb, object, grammar, so this is a complete sentence. We are using it as a noun. So the subject of this sentence is that you love grammar. The object is is. And then after the be verb, you add a complement. We don't call this an object because is does not change. The idea of being very interesting. It simply connects the two parts of the sentence. But still, this is a complete sentence. And again, if you think that beginning a sentence with that feels weird, you can add the fact that the meaning is the same.
Now we've been talking about using the word that. But you can also use other words to begin a noun clause. The, the other words are all basically question words. So we're going to move into indirect questions. Indirect questions can often be a kind of noun clause. So for example, um, If the question is, should we go home early? Don't answer the question. The indirect question might be, th this is the complete sentence, right? We is the subject. Should go is the verb. Home is technically not the object, but we'll call it an object because we don't want to get too complicated. And then early is the adverb, which does not change the grammar. And in this case, the word that tells us that this is a noun clause is if or whether. So if a sentence has a question word in the middle, instead of at the beginning, you know that it's not a real question. It is an indirect question. You don't know the answer to this question. Now, you might also have noticed that the word should has moved. In the question, you begin with should, should we? Uh, we because it's a question, we move the first word in the verb phrase to the front of the sentence. But in the indirect question, this is not a question. I'm telling you about a question. I'm not asking you. So we don't move any words. It follows the original word order. We can look again at the uh, syntax picture for questions. Right, so in this case. Um, It is a question, so you move the word will to before the subject they. But if it's not a question, then you don't move this and it remains in the original order. They will talk about something. So for this kind of indirect question, um, any question word except for the nouns. So you cannot use who or what. We're going to talk about that later. But you can use when, where, why, how, if, and whether to begin a noun clause that is an indirect question. Uh, you can easily think of example questions. I don't know when we will go home. We will go home is a complete sentence. I don't know where I can find my friend. I can find my friend is a complete sentence. I don't know why we are learning grammar. We are learning grammar is a complete sentence. I don't know how to, no, not to. I don't know how we will do and uh, uh, OK, so it's not that easy to come up with examples. Mm. I don't know how we can go on. We can go on is a complete sentence. Uh, and then if and whether is just like the previous example. Now, the reason that who and what look different is because of this picture, right? The what has moved from the back of the sentence to the front of the sentence. So when you form an indirect question with who and what, these are originally part of the main sentence, either the subject or the object. So the indirect question will not be a noun clause. 
it will not be a complete sentence within a sentence. So, uh, let's see. What should we do today is the question. If you turn this into an indirect question, you will notice that what we will do today is not a complete sentence. We will do today is not a complete sentence. But the, sorry, this should be should. The word order has still changed, right? Should we in the question becomes we should in the indirect question. So going back to this picture, it is the same thing. This is not a question, so you don't move part of the verb phrase. But this general movement of the question word is still there. You still begin this part of the sentence by moving it from the back to the front. So in fact, we can use this example sentence. The original sentence is they will talk about something. The question when you move both parts is what will they talk about? But the indirect question where you only move the what is, for example, I don't know what they will talk about. Because this is not a question, you don't move the will. Sorry, you don't move the will, but everything else, uh, the what you still have to move. The same for the word who, right? Who is not here becomes I don't know who is not here. In this question, who is the subject? So you don't have to move anything inside the sentence. Who is not here? The order is the same. But the, this part is not here is not a noun clause. It is not a complete sentence. OK. Finished questions. So I, in the very first week, I kept on emphasizing you must be able to recognize what is a complete sentence and what is not a complete sentence. And here you see why this is so important. Even when I'm talking to you, I keep using noun clauses, right? You see why this is so important. This is so important is a complete sentence. The fact that uh, I, people always use noun clauses all the time, that is also a noun clause, tells you how important this grammar concept is. So if you don't have questions, let's do some practice. Uh, this will also be part of the midterm exam. Let's go to page 25. So this is a mixture. Oh, we, we compared answers to this, right? Um, here, this is a noun clause, right? She explained to the man that. And then this is the exclamation, the explanation. It is a combined two complete sentences that follow the word that. So this entire thing is a noun clause. Here also, it turned out that. Again, two complete sentences connected by and. These are combined into one noun clause because of the word that. Here also, he said. 
that he hadn't understood. This is not a direct quotation because the verb tense matches the general sentence. Past tense, uh, past perfect is also a kind of past. If this were a, comp a, a direct quotation, it would say, he said, comma quotation, I hadn't understood. But it says he hadn't understood. So this is an indirect quotation. So he said that he hadn't understood and was sorry. OK, uh, we did that last time, so let's go to page 29. So here, all you have to do is find the correct place to put the word that into the sentence. It's 10 questions. No, it's nine questions. Uh, I'll give you two minutes. OK, let's compare answers. Number two, last night I dreamed that. I was at my aunt's house. Right, I was at my aunt's house is a complete sentence. The verb encourages you to give a situation so that that belongs here. I dreamed that I was. Number three, I think that. Most people have kind hearts. Number four, I know that Matt walks a long distance to school every day. I assume that he doesn't have a bicycle. Again, he doesn't have a bicycle is a complete sentence. It is the object of the verb assume. It is the content of what you are assuming. So I assume that. Number five, I heard that Sarah dropped out of school. Number six, did you notice that Jiming wasn't in class yesterday? I hope that he's OK. Number seven, I trust Linda. I believe what she said. I believe that she told the truth. What she said is an indirect question, uh, but as we mentioned, indirect questions using the word what or who do not 
lead to a noun clause, so you don't need the word that. It is, I believe that. Number eight, can Julia prove that her watch was stolen? B, I suppose that she can't, but she suspects that her roommate's friend took it. So the word suppose just means guess. So you need to guess something, right? Suspect means like you're you're you think that someone did it. You think that something is true. So suspects that. Nine. Did you know that leopards sometimes keep their dead prey in trees? B. Really? A. Yes. I understand that they save their food for later if they're not hungry. Did you notice if they're not hungry is also a noun clause, right? They're not hungry is a complete sentence. And it's introduced by the word if. Number 10, do you believe that a monster really exists in Loch Ness in Scotland? Uh, this is the Loch Ness monster. B, I don't know. Look at this story in the newspaper. It says that some scientists have proved that the Loch Ness monster exists. A, you shouldn't always believe what you read in the newspapers. I think that the monster is purely fictional, not real. And then you also notice what you read in the newspapers is another indirect question. Okay, do you have questions about this page? So some of you might be thinking that uh, the word that can be omitted in some cases. When you are talking, yes, you can omit the word that in these cases as long as the meaning is clear. But when you're writing, you should always put the word that in before a noun clause if you need it. You should not omit this use of the word that when you are writing. Now, what makes this complicated is that most writing in English is very informal. It didn't used to be this way, but today if you go read a newspaper, OK, not a newspaper, again with the newspapers. If you go read an online article in English, most of the time it will be very informal language. And in those cases, the author will sometimes omit this use of the word that. But you really shouldn't do that. As for all of the other words that introduce a noun clause, you should never omit those words. How, where, when, if, never omit those words. OK, let's go to page 31. Again, add the word that in the correct position. 12, uh, 11 questions, I'll give you another two minutes.
Let's compare. Number two, I'm glad that it's warm today. Number three, I'm surprised that you bought a car. Number four, are you certain that Mr. McVeigh won't be here tomorrow? Number five, John is pleased that Claudio will be here for the meeting. Number six, Carmela was convinced that I was angry with her, but I wasn't. Number seven, Jason was angry that his father wouldn't let him use the family car. Number eight, Andy was fortunate that you could help him with his algebra. Algebra is a kind of math using X and Y. He was delighted that he got a good grade on the exam. Number nine, it's a fact that the Nile River flows north. Now, be careful. I said it, you can add the words the fact that, and it just means that. But here the question says a fact. So this is actually part of the sentence. It's a fact. Number 10, it's true that some dinosaurs could fly. Number 11, are you aware that dinosaurs lived on Earth for 125 million years? OK, this Earth, I think, should use a capital E because it is the name of the planet, Xingxing Mingzi. Earth in lowercase e means dirt or ground. And number 12, is it true that human beings have lived on Earth for only 4 million years? OK, questions about this page? So you can see that in order to determine whether you need to use the word that, looking at the verb is not always safe. You have to look at the structure of the sentence. If there is a complete sentence within another complete sentence and there's no other question word to introduce that inside sentence, then you probably need to add the word that. Next page, again, put in the that's. There are eight question, uh, seven questions. I'll give you two minutes. Sorry, I'll give you one minute. OK, let's compare. Number two. Guido is delighted that you can speak Italian. B, I'm surprised that he can understand my Italian. It's not very good. Number three, how do you know that it's going to be nice tomorrow? B, I heard the weather report. A, so? The weather report is often wrong, you know. I'm still worried 
that it'll rain on our picnic. Number four, are you afraid that another disaster like the one at Chernobyl might occur? Uh, this is the Chernobyl nuclear accident in Ukraine, Chernobyl. Yeah, B, yes, I'm convinced that it can happen again. Number five, are you aware that you have to pass the English test to get into the university? B, yes, but I'm not worried about it. I'm positive that I'll do well on it. Positive here means sure or certain. Six, Mrs. Lane hopes that we can come with her to the museum tomorrow. B, I don't think that I can go with you. I am supposed to babysit my little brother tomorrow. A, oh, too bad. I wish that you could come. Number seven, is it a fact that blue whales are the largest creatures on Earth? Number eight, do you think that technology benefits humankind? B, of course. Everyone knows that modern inventions make our lives better. A, I'm not sure that that's true. Let me say that again. I'm not sure that that's true. That's true is a complete sentence. It's missing a that here. For example, cars and buses provide faster transportation, but they pollute our air. Air pollution can cause lung disease and other illnesses. OK, questions on this page? Right, so again, this that is a subject. It's a pronoun, that means it. So it's missing a function word that. OK, during the break, please do page 33. 33 is correct all of the errors, correct all of the mistakes, including what we have been talking about today. OK, let's take a short break.
OK, let's compare answers. Number one. Tell the taxi driver where you want to go. This is an indirect question. You don't need to move anything inside the sentence, so you don't need to add the word do. Simply where you want to go. Number two, my roommate came into the room and asked me, comma, quotation mark, capital W, why aren't you in class, question mark, quotation mark. I said, comma, quotation mark, I am waiting for a telephone call from my family, period, quotation mark. Did you catch that? OK, good, good. Number three, it was my first day at the university. And I was. On my way to my first class. I wondered who else would be. In the class. What would the teacher be like? The entire sentence is in past tense and there is no direct quotation. So all of the verbs should be in past tense and the past of will is would. Also, personally, I think this should be at university. No, the we usually say in college at university. Number four, he asked me what I intended to do after I graduate. This is an indirect question. And because you have what, you don't need that. And because it is an indirect question, the sentence order in the middle does not have to change. You don't need to add a word to move to the front. And if you don't have did, then the main verb has to be in past tense, intended. So this sentence is, he asked me what I intended to do after I graduate. Number five, what a patient tells a doctor is confidential. Confidential means secret. All needed. So again, this is an indirect question. So you don't need to add the word do. Uh, so you need to put this present tense on the main verb tell to make it tells. And because you have what? The original sentence is a patient tells a doctor what? Right, you move the what from the back to the front, so you do not have to put something in its place. So the correct sentence is what a patient tells a doctor is confidential. The subject is what a patient tells a doctor. The verb is is. So you don't need the it. Number six. What my friend and I did was our secret. We didn't even tell our parents what we did. Number seven. The doctor asked if I felt OK. It's a question, so you can't use that. It should be if or whether. I told him that I didn't feel well. Past tense, indirect uh, quotation should be past tense. Now, there are some exceptions. Sometimes the indirect quotation part will be in a different time than the main sentence. And the exception is if it continues to the present. So for example here, 
if you say I told him that I don't feel well, this means that I still don't feel well right now. But most of the time the inside tense should match the outside tense. Number eight, I asked him what kind of movies he likes. Period or semicolon, 句点或分号 If you use a period, this should be capital H. He said to me, comma, quotation mark, I like romantic movies, period, quotation mark. So the key point here is you cannot simply use one comma to connect two complete sentences. Either change it to a semicolon, fen hao, or a period and then begin a new sentence. Number nine, is it true that you almost drowned? Inside quotation marks. So quotation mark, is it true that you almost drowned? Question mark, quotation mark, my friend asked me. Quotation mark, yes, comma, quotation mark, I said. Quotation mark, I'm really glad to be alive. It was really frightening, quotation mark. Number 10, the fact that I almost drowned makes me very careful about water safety whenever I go swimming. The word whenever here also introduces a noun clause. So the question words, who, what, when, where, why. OK, hang on. Who, what, when, where, and how, not why. You can add ever at the end, which means any. Whenever means any time, whoever means any person, whatever means anything, however means any way. This is related to the use of the word however to mean but, right? Blah, 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 however, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but in, un, except for that usage, all of the other uses of the word however mean any way. You can do it however you want. You can do it in any way that you want. So the only word you can't add ever to is why. Uh, so if you need to say any reason, you have to say whatever reason. So you can say uh, you can do it however you want, means you can do it in any way that you want. But if you want to say any reason, you have to say you can do it for whatever reason. Which means for any reason. Um, but the grammar is the same as the original question word, so it can still introduce a noun clause. Number 11, I didn't know where I was supposed to get off the bus. So I asked the driver where the science museum was. She told me the name of the street. She said that she would tell me when I should get off the bus. You know that this is indirect quotation because it says she. If it's a direct quotation, it would say I. Number 12, my mother did not live with us. When other children asked me where my mother was, I told them that she was going to come to visit me very soon. 
If you want, you can omit the second two. This two is optional. Number 13, when I asked the taxi driver to drive faster, he said, comma, quotation mark, I will drive faster if you pay me more, quotation mark. At that time, comma, I didn't care how much it would cost. So I told him to go as fast as he could. Personally, I would change this to at the time. But at that time is still correct. Number 14, my parents told me that it was essential to know English if I wanted to study at an American university. OK, questions about this page? Anyone I uh, went by too fast, you want me to repeat it? All right, page 34. Again, 10 mistakes in the use of noun clauses. So these are all related to what we talked about today. Uh, it has already fixed the first one for you. Please find nine more mistakes. The highlight means nothing. It could be related. It could be unrelated. It's just the file that I found. This is the only So nine mistakes. I will give you nine minutes. Well, they're all related to noun clauses. I'll give you six minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. There are nine mistakes. The first one is here. What stands out to me? Which means what strikes me? What leaves an impression on me? The next one, it's clear that he's paying better attention. The next one, given the fact that. The next one, this should be by the fact that. I know I said that the fact that equals that there's no difference, but sometimes it really feels weird. It would be better if you add the fact. This is one of those cases. By the fact that. Next one, Ziqing. This one should be whatever. Anything that is preventing him. So whatever is preventing him. The next one, what his difficulty is. Next one, I thought that. Next one. If he did the work. Next one, he said that that was the case. Two that's, that that was the case. How many is that? Is that nine? Yeah, OK, yeah, that's it. Great, we got them all, yes. Uh, and if you missed some of them, think about why it is wrong and why it should be corrected this way. Next page. Correct all of the mistakes. Uh, the, the, the first. Uh, first half of this page, four questions. I think they're that they're all related to noun clauses, so I'll give you. Two minutes.
All right, let's compare answers. Number two, no one seems to know when Maria will arrive. Number three, I don't know what that word means. Number four, I wonder if the teacher knows the answer, period, not a question mark, period. So the teacher knows the answer. Another way to fix this sentence, I wonder, colon, maha, does the teacher know the answer? And number five, I'll ask her whether she would like some coffee or not. You can also use if. I'll ask her if she would like some coffee or not. Both are fine. Questions about these four? OK. Uh, next, there are six mistakes. It looks like also they're all about noun clauses, so I'll give you another two minutes. All right, let's compare. A, do you know who our new neighbors are? B, yes, I run into them whenever I go out in the yard. A yard is like the front area of your house, qian ren. Or I guess maybe not the front, but up, like outside part of your house. A, oh yeah? What do you think they are like? B, they seem really nice. I know that they both work. A, hmm, I wonder if they have children. You can also say whether. I wonder whether they have children. B, they have three. I'm happy that their daughter is the same age as Maria. Questions? OK, moving on. Next page. Wait, did we already do this part? It looks very familiar. No, we have not done this before. So uh, we're still on the. Oh, oh, I see. OK, yeah, OK, so we're going to start with number six. Sorry, we're still on page 35, 6 to 11. I guess I must have repeated. Um, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11. five questions. I'll give you two minutes.
All right, number six. Be sure to tell the doctor where it hurts. Seven, why I am unhappy is something that I can't explain. Number eight, nobody cares if we stay or leave. You can also use weather. Number nine, I need to know who your teacher is. Ten, I don't understand why the car is not running properly. Eleven, my young son wants to know where the stars go in the daytime. Questions? If you have questions, please ask. The, this is all part of the uh, midterm exam um, range. Those are calls if I want Let's go to page 37. OK, so there are eight more mistakes related to direct and indirect quotations. So involving quotation marks or noun clauses. Eight mistakes. I'll give you six, five minutes.
I have found more than eight problems. So find as many as you can. Okay, before we begin, I should point out that this letter or this email is written in informal English. So the so-called correct answer skips a lot of the that's. Um, but as a learning exercise, I'm going to give you every single that that should appear in the letter. Dear Emily, I just wanted to fill you in on Tim's school adventures. About two months ago, Melanie said that she felt that we should switch Tim to the public school. He'd been in a private school for several months, as you know. I asked her why she thought that. And she said he's miserable where he is, and I don't think the qual that I don't think that. OK, you can skip this one because it's speech, right? As in like she's speaking. So if you don't have this, that I think it's fine. But technically, I don't think that the quality of education is good there. He says. And again, you can skip this that he says that. He doesn't feel like he can communicate with the teachers and that no one understands him. By the way, he can communicate with the teachers is a complete sentence. So this is a noun clause introduced by the word like. When you use the word like in this way, it means similar to, but not exactly the same. So it's a it's a vague feeling here. He feels like so the feeling it's it's close to his actual feeling. And the idea is that he cannot exp express his actual feelings in precise language. He can only get very close. 
Now, I do think you should probably add this that because it, it is a parallel structure. Feels like, or not, not that, sorry. Feels like he can communicate with the teachers and that, yeah, okay, so doesn't feel like he can communicate. There's no that here, sorry. Continuing, he also doesn't think, and you can skip this, that, that he has many friends. She said that she thought that we could move him to the local high school, which has a good academic reputation. I told her that I agreed with her, but that we should ask Tim. Notice this parallel structure. I told her two things. One thing, I agreed with her. The second thing, but we should ask Tim. A, but B. The next morning, we asked him if he wanted to stay at the private school. I was surprised at how strong his response was. He told me that he hated the private school and didn't want to go there any longer, so we moved him. He's been at the new school for a month now and he's doing well. Whenever I ask him if he has done his homework, he says, Dad, I've already finished it. He's made several new friends. Every now and then, he asks us why we didn't let him change schools sooner. He says that people are treating him as an individual now. I'm just glad that we moved him when we did. Not much else is new. Oh yes, I do need to ask, comma, quotation mark, capital A, are you coming for the holidays? Question mark, quotation mark. Email soon and let us know or call. Love, Charles. Okay, questions? All right, let's go to page 39. All right, so punctuation, capital letters, and if there is a noun clause, underline the whole thing, including the first word, right? So he lives is a complete sentence. Please include the where, where he lives. If there is one, there may not be one. There are ten question, nine questions. I guess there's eight questions. They did number two for you. Eight questions. Uh, I'll give you five minutes. Four minutes.
Let's begin early because I am impatient. Number three, what does Sandra want? Question mark. Capital D, do you know? Question mark. Number four, do you know? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, do you know what Sandra wants? Question mark. Underline what Sandra wants. Number five, what Yoko knows is important to us, period. Underline what Yoko knows. Number six, we talked about what Yoko knows, period. Again, underline what Yoko knows. Number seven, what do you think? Question mark, capital D. Did you tell your professor what you think? Question mark. Underline what your uh, what you think. Number eight, my professor knows what I think, period. Underline what I think. Number nine, where is the bus stop? Question mark, capital D. Do you know where the bus stop is? Question mark. Underline where the bus stop is. Is that right? Uh, sorry, no, there, there, there's don't underline anything. This is not a complete sentence. So number nine, there is no noun clause. Number 10, what did he report? Question mark. Capital W. What he reported is important. Period. Underline what he reported. Questions? OK, we finished the whole damn thing. Questions about these 39 pages. OK, so next week the midterm exam will begin as soon as the bell rings because there's no homework to compare answers. Uh, and after the midterm, we will start doing some of the harder stuff like relative clauses, complex sentences, things like that. OK, good luck on the exam. See you next week.